Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to create protected routes in React Native. So just to be clear, this is for React Native and not React JS. I know this can get confusing sometimes, but if you want React JS, I actually have a video on that topic as well. The concept is actually really similar to what we're gonna do here, but for you React Native developers, what we're gonna do here is focus strictly on creating those private routes. So let's say you have a couple of pages that you wanna protect from users that are not authenticated or users with certain roles. We just wanna focus on creating that layer in between and seeing how that can be done with React Native. So for this video, we're not gonna focus on login functionality, registration, logging out. The full authentication flow will be followed up after this video where I'll actually build all that in into this application that we're going to work on today. But this one, we want to just go directly into protected routes. So for this video, I do have a project that I'm working with. You don't need to use this project. You can just build your own or work on whatever you're working on already. But if you want to follow along and use the project that we have, you can go ahead and clone the GitHub repo. It's linked in the video description. And I also made this in a video prior to this one. So you can follow along if you want. That's all up to you, but let's go ahead and get started. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna separate our routes into two different categories. We're gonna have our private routes and then we're gonna have our public routes. And we can do this with route groups. So any standard route will be in the app folder just as it should be. We'll have a root layout folder, a sign-in page, and any other page that we want to be public. Now, any private routes, we're gonna create a route group. In this case, the folder name will also be app. We'll keep it the same, but we'll wrap it in parentheses right here and in a route group, group, that route group will contain its own layout. Now within that layout, we're going to create almost like a layer of middleware in between where before we render out any of the child components, we're going to check if there's a session and if that user is authenticated. If they are, we'll proceed and render out the rest of that layout with the children. And if not, this is where we can redirect a user to the sign in page. So the concept here is pretty simple. We're just creating that layer of protection inside of the layout file. So here's a project that I'm gonna build on top of. Now it's very minimalist, but I'll recap it just so you feel like you understand the code a little bit. Inside of the app folder here, we have some components. You don't need to worry about the details of those components. I have a very simple layout. We just render out this slot right there. And then I have an index.tsx file. And this is just the contents of this page where I connect to an app right backend and render out these items right here. So we don't need to worry about any of this if you did not follow that tutorial. Now we also have this lib folder. That's where I connect to my app right backend. And that's about all the code that I built into this. So let's go ahead and try to recreate that structure here. So we have this app folder, we have our root layout. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and create the route group here. So we'll create a new folder. And I'm just gonna call this app. Now this route group is gonna contain its own layout. So we're gonna go ahead and create that file here. And inside of this file, we wanna go ahead and create the layout. So we're gonna export default function, and this is gonna be called app layout. Now for this layout, I also need a few imports here. So we wanna import slot and we wanna import redirect from expo router. Now in the layout itself, let's go ahead and replicate a session here. So for now, this is just gonna be a hard coded value, but later on, this will actually be some kind of user session or the user object itself here. So we're gonna use this session to decide if we wanna render out the other components here. So if we don't have a session, we first wanna check that. If we don't have one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna redirect our user. So we're gonna do redirect, and then we'll send the user to the sign-in page. Now, if we do have a user, what we're gonna do is simply render out slot, and this will let the user continue to the page that they're trying to go to. So that's all we're doing, is we're creating that layer in between, and eventually this will actually be some kind of request where we check for an actual user, but that's the core idea. It's actually a very simple concept. Now, I also need to create my sign-in page before I can start moving files around here. So inside of the root app directory, we're gonna create a signin.tsx folder. And for this, I'm just gonna use a shortcut that I have here, which allows me to create my components with this code snippet. Here's my sign-in page. And the only thing that I'm gonna do here is change this to safe area view, just to make sure this is more visible. We'll throw that in here. And I'm not gonna create the login page at this point. We're just gonna leave it like this. I just wanna make sure that we can actually render this out. So we have our sign-in page. Then what I can do is take my index.tsx folder. I can put that into my route group simply rearrange these. We'll make sure that the imports are updated and let's go ahead and refresh this. 
And because the session is false, this should redirect me to the sign-in page here. So when this is true, then I try to access that home page. I'll be able to see it. And when it's false, this won't work. So this right here actually completes it for the protected routes functionality. That's literally all we need to do. Now, from here, what I want to do is actually end this video by following up with a context provider here. And I actually want to lift up this state. So this session right here is hard-coded in here. We're still going to have it hard-coded, but I want to create this in React context, lift up the state so this can be accessed through our application. So by the end of this video, what I also want to do is use that same global state that we create in that context provider and also use it within the sign-in page. And anytime that value changes, so if we're logged in, we also won't be able to see this page. It'll send us to that home page. So we simply want to lift up that state. So let's go ahead and create that. So it's really up to us where we put the context folder. In my case, I think I want to put this outside of the app folder. So with lib right here and assets, I want to make, make sure this is side by side here. So we're going to create a folder called context. And within this folder, we're going to create our first, first context called auth context here. So auth context.js here. And we want to make a few imports here. So the first thing we want is use context. Then we want to import create context. And I also want use state. And I think this is going to be it for now. So this is all coming from React. So we have our imports. Now we can actually create the context here. So this is going to be called auth context. And we can call create context. And once we have our auth context, we also want to create the provider. So this is going to be auth provider. And with this provider, we're going to go ahead and first make sure that we can get our children here. So we want to pass those through. Now for the return value, we're going to pass in our auth context provider here. So we're going to access auth context dot provider and we need to do some housekeeping here. So within our provider, we want to pass down value, which will be a key value store. And this is how we're going to pass down data to our child components here. So we're going to call this context data. And this will be a key value store. We can throw that in here. And we also need to set some kind of loading state here so we can decide whether we want to render out the rest of the components or if we're still in that current process of loading, maybe getting some users, whatever our application needs to do. So we're going to set this in state. So this is going to be loading and set loading. And by default, loading is going to be set to true. So now we can use our loading state right here. So first we want to check if we're currently loading. So if we're loading, we want to render out some text. So I want to import text from React Native. And I also want to import safe area view. And this is all coming from React Native. So now when we're loading, first I'm going to render out safe area view. And then I'm going to throw in text here. This is going to be my awesome loading spinner here. And that's all we're doing. So that's the first condition here. Now I'm going to create some space here. So if loading is complete in the else condition, what we want to do is simply just render out the children. So that means loading is done. Go ahead and proceed to render out all the child components. Let the rendering continue here. So we're simply checking that and we're rendering out the loading state. Now with this, let's also go ahead and create a session state. So we'll do session and then set session use state and this will also be a hard-coded value and for now let's just set that to false and later on we might want to get our user in fact i will do this in the next video so we'll do user and set user we can call use state again and for now user will be false we don't have any users now let's also go ahead and just prep some functions for the next video as well so this is going to be real quick we're not going to finish up these functions i'll just create a sign-in function and this should actually help you just kind of get an idea of how this is even going to work here so even though we're not going to complete the functions right now, it's still going to give you a good idea to understand the entire flow here. So let's go ahead and finish up the sign out function. Now from here, what I need to do is pass in some state here. So we want to pass in the session to context data. We'll throw in the user. And then for the next video, even if you don't follow that, I still want to set this up here. We want to throw in our sign in function and our sign out function. So we'll pass those down. And in order to make this easier to access, let's go ahead and just create our own hook. And this will make this a lot easier to use the actual data here. So this will be use auth. We'll create the function and we'll do return. And this will be use context. And we're just going to throw in 
auth context. So now we just use this hook right here throughout our application instead of actually having to call use context in other parts of our application. And this is going to make this much easier. Now from here, in order to actually access this, we need to wrap our root layout in a provider here. So not the layout that we just created, but the root layout for our entire application. And this is where we'll import that provider. So actually I forgot to export this. So let's go ahead and export and we'll export use auth and we'll export auth context and auth provider if we need that anywhere else. I don't know if we need auth context anywhere else, but might as well just export it right now. So let's go ahead and import that. And we want to import auth provider. And this is coming from context and we're going into auth context. So now that we have our auth provider, let's go ahead and just wrap this. So auth provider will wrap slot here. Let's just actually grab slot and then copy and paste that into our auth provider. And now use auth should be able to access data from our layout here. So let's go into our route group layout. And instead of just setting the session here, let's go ahead and import use auth. So import use auth. And now we should be able to simply go ahead and grab our session. And this is going to come from use auth. So we have our session and right now the provider is working. So we see our loading state, right? So we can just manually go ahead and change this at this point. So right now, let's just say our page is loaded. We're not going to focus on actually render out, rendering that user. Let's just say this is false, right? We loaded the data. We're not going to worry about updating this. So now we see our sign in page. Now within our layout here, actually inside of auth context, let's change our session to true. Now within layout, I can just go ahead and call refresh here. Now we see our to-do list. Now, if I change this to false again, this will redirect me and I'll set this back to true. So the next thing I want to do is actually make sure that our user, once they're in the sign-in page, gets redirected to the home page if a user is logged in. So, so right now, our session is true. So in theory, we should be redirected. So let's go ahead and use, use auth here. And this is why it's so useful to set that state in a global value like this, because now it's easily accessible anywhere we want. So let's get the session. This is in the sign in page, use auth. And then here we can just create a condition. So we'll just say if session. So if we have a session, let's go ahead and import redirect. That's coming from Expo router. And here we can simply say, okay, if we have a session, go ahead and redirect the user. And we're going to send the user to the home page here. So let's just send that to the home page like that, close that off. And here we go. So now if we go into the auth state, if I change this to false, it sends me to the sign in page. If I send this to true, so it's reading that. And there we go. So that's it for this video. We created our protected routes. We lifted up our state using React context. In the next video, what I'm going to do is actually create the login functionality, logout, and registration functionality, all based on this. So we're going to continue on from this code. If you follow it along in your own project and you want to also see how to do that, you should be able to implement all of this in your own project just the way that I'm doing it. So be sure to stick around. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe to the AppRite YouTube channel, and I'll see you all in the next video.